speak. Okay, I wonder if you could just briefly describe the, the situation under which Jamie had her MDE. Okay, when she was five years old in preschool, the school called and told me that Jamie was really sick and could I come get her and I went and picked her up and um, she was just high, high fever, stiff neck, throwing up, just real sick little girl. And so I, uh, my husband and I put her in the car and decided we were gonna take her to the hospital. And we live about an hour away from the hospital and we were, dri we were driving as fast <laughs> as we could to get her there. And she turned to her sister, threw up all over her and collapsed. We stopped the car, did CPR, we couldn't get her to respond. So my husband said, we'll just drive as fast as we can because we're about 10 minutes away by then. So we got up there and he put her in his arms and carried her in and a nurse saw her that she was completely collapsed. Her arms are hanging and everything. And they grabbed his arm and ran with her as fast as they could. And they um, told us that they had to do a spinal tap and signed some papers and stuff and they said that she didn't have a very good chance. They didn't think she was gonna make it. And so they were working on her body while um, the ambulance was waiting and then they came out and told us that, that she didn't have no chance of survival at Valley, that they had to get her to Children's immediately. And so they put her in the ambulance and they took her up there. And she was diagnosed with spinal meningitis? Spinal meningitis. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, Tell us about the near-death experience that she, that she had. I mean, she didn't talk about it immediately, did she? No. How, how did it come about that she um, about Jamie, it? after having the meningitis, she totally lost everything. She lost her how to spell her name, who she was. She um, was neurologically handicapped, and she had to learn everything from scratch, even how to ride a, a bicycle and the whole works. And so it wasn't until about three years later, I was working at the doctor's office and they asked me, you know, if I'd ever talked to Jamie about what happened to her. And I said, no. So that night I went home and I asked her, I took her in the bedroom and had her sit on bed. And I, and I said, Jamie, do you remember what happened to you when you had the meningitis and you were in the hospital? And she said, she looked at me and she said, yes, I remember things. And she started crying. I said, well, don't tell me anymore. I'm going to go back and talk to the doctors and have someone, you know, talk to you about it because she had been going to a psychiatrist for two years and, and it, nothing ever came up, but they knew there was something wrong. This child would go under tables and hide and stuff whenever there was a lot of people and she just wouldn't talk and they put her in speech therapy and all the special education. And um, so then I, the next day I said, well, would you like to go talk to this doctor? And, that, and that's when she, um, she said, well, can I draw you a picture of what happened to me? And I said, yes, you can draw me a picture. And she, she had tears coming down her eyes, and I was kind of crying, too. I just couldn't believe it as she went on and on, you know, drawing the things in the picture. Um, you mentioned before that uh, she said something very sweet that she... That's yeah, she, she, she said to me, she said, Mom, I didn't know you could talk to God. And I said, what? What did he say to you? And she said, well, when I floated out of my body and I was up there, I saw God sitting on a log. And he said, it's not your time to die. And she said, so she had a choice. She could stay up there where it was peaceful and really pretty and that, or she could come back down in her body. And she cho chose to come back down because she knew if she stayed up there, she wouldn't see her mom or dad. Or her, she, t she said that, um, she knew that I was going to have a little boy and we kept telling her you can't tell people that because you don't know that and she said yes she knew that that I was going to have a little boy and that's one of the reasons why she came back down is because she wanted to you know have a brother she has a brother. Mm-hmm. She has a sister and a brother, but yeah, she wanted a baby brother so bad. There's five years between them, so it was like, you know, you know she was real happy and... Um, why... This is like a leading question, but mm -hmm. what, why do you think she finds it difficult to talk about it? Even well, first five of years all... Later, this is five years later, right? right. Okay. First of all, being in special education, this is a child that's pulled out from classroom to classroom to go here, to go there. She knew she was very, very smart before all this happened, and now she's had to struggle just to, you know, do math or reading or spelling. It's just really hard on her not, you know, having everything come so easy, and now it's so difficult. 
And she feels that if she told people this, that they would make fun of her and laugh at her and say, you can't talk to God. That's, you know, that's just not true. And so um, when different shows have aired and they've seen Jamie on there, people just can't believe it because they know this child doesn't talk. She wouldn't say stuff, you know. She's not one that likes to be in the spotlight, you know. And um, so then they've asked her questions. And like the little neighbor boy who's, you know, been real troubled about dying and everything and, and that. And she thinks that if she can talk to other kids that are very, very scared to die and make them feel at peace, then she's done something good. And I think that's why she does open up enough to tell her story. But she doesn't want to give any more than what she know knows is true because she thinks people will say that she's lying or... Has she actually said to you that she wants to help other kids? Yes, she somewhere? said, you know, that she wants other kids to hear her story and realize that this has happened to her and she didn't want to talk about it but by talking about it it's um, made her you know feel happy and and knowing that there's other children out there that have went through the same thing that it might be real scared and haven't spoken enough that it would help them last question aside from what you just said uh, has she changed or has, her, has this experience changed her Mm -hmm. that you can really see? Um, right after she told what had happened, um, everybody was saying that they can't believe that, you know, how much she's changed. She's no longer crawling under the table and hiding from things. Like you'd go to a birthday party, she couldn't handle being in a room full of children. She would crawl under the table and um, always be in a room by herself, never wanted to be out amongst other children. And now she's... Um, I don't know if she has all these kids come over and she's right in the center of attraction. She's, you know, real happy and she speaks up and she's not afraid to get up. And one thing she did was um, they had written a book and she had published her book and did the coloring and everything and she was so proud of it. She got up in front of the whole school and gave, gave a book report on this book because they were so impressed with the pictures and stuff in it. So she would have never done anything like that before in the schools, you know, now she likes to go to school and before she hated it. Okay, this is the last question. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, we can just, we can just go to lunch. Hold, yeah, let's hold that up. Okay. And then if you can sort of uh, interpret for us. You can just keep a watch, I mean, you'll for a okay, time. Okay, you gotta be up higher, Phil. Phil, with your mic. Still? Mm -hmm. Yeah, a little bit higher. Why don't you stand up? Well, that's... Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah that probably won't be too good. Okay. Steve. Okay, Julie. No, no, interpret the uh, okay. Jamie's picture for us. Okay, this is Jamie when they first brought her into the hospital and they had her on the bed and they were um, taking her vitals and that. The doctors are working on her and the nurse was standing by and as they were doing um, very, very painful things to her body, the spinal tap and that, she started floating out of her body and this is where she's floating up and she told me that when she was floating she didn't feel no pain even though they were doing things that were very, very painful. And she saw this bright, bright light in the rainbow up there. And as she was floating, she saw three angels, and they were, she said, large, medium, and small. And then there was uh, Jesus sitting on a log with a red hat, and she said that he told her it wasn't her time to die yet. And then she remembers floating back down into her body in this beep, beep, beep and she kept saying what's this beep 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 mom and I didn't know because I wasn't in the hospital with her you know and my sister and mom I finally asked them I said what's the beep 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 and they said that must be when she woke up in intensive care the machines is the only thing you know I wasn't there so I don't know she asked me and I said I don't know what that is intensive care or the road runner happened yeah to she just said that, that she remembers opening her eyes and hearing this beep Beep, right. beep, and she was. She said she was back into her body, and and she doesn't remember any of the painful things that they did to her. Great. Okay. Okay.
cut out early. <laughs> Every time I call. Paid. <laughs> right. All right. Okay. Lock this door right here. Go ahead and slide it if you want. Okay. Just, just, if you need any other questions, you've got the phone. Okay. Yeah, I do. Thank you very much. You bet. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. So, Dr. Morse, I'm correct in saying this was done by a boy. How old was the boy? Uh, this was done by a seven-year-old boy. Okay. Okay. Thank you. 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 And seeing a tunnel that was lined with lights, as he described them, it looked like airplane landing lights. Okay. And we see he's in the tunnel and he's looking down, and the lights are, um, uh, you know, right. landing ahead <laughs> of him. Air conditioning controlled through the whole building, or is it just in this room? I don't think I'm going to have But I know that's a. Yeah, if it's, if it's consistent throughout and it's not that. No, oh, so okay, don't move. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. sorry. I thought I could get a clean beat nice. You're of the other school, I can tell. What's that? Okay. Dash darkness. And then a, wo a woman came to her named Elizabeth with golden hair. Uh -huh. Are you getting this on the... Yeah, okay. I'll roll, go ahead. Okay. And uh, that this woman uh, came to her with gold, golden hair, and that when the woman came to her, the tunnel lit up, and she saw that she was in actually a long, dark tunnel lined with bricks, different colored bricks. An ASEAN uh, interpretation here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did she ever tell you who the lady was, she thought? Or? It's a woman named Elizabeth. Elizabeth. And that woman was there to help her. Hmm. Okay. All right. I'm so rolling on that. This was what? Doctor, area? again, this was... That That's an eight-year-old girl who had a cardiac arrest, and uh, this, this being of light came to her, appeared at her bedside. Told her to let go of her fear, and she could come with him, but she didn't want it. She didn't want to go? She was tired of people telling her what to do. <laughs> <laughs> really?